Okay, good afternoon traders. Uh, sorry a bit late today. Uh, just organizing my computer actually, getting a few things sorted out. So um, yeah, welcome to Trade Setup and the live stream for, was it the 23rd of uh, November? Uh, let me just get rid of something else we've read in there. So yeah, hope we're all doing well. The market's up again today. Uh, quite nice. We're going into a, um, what is it, Thanksgiving holiday in the US. I think that's, um, so they've got a few days off. I think it's Thursday, Friday. Um, I'm not sure about Wednesday night. Wednesday night might be a shortened session in the US as well, uh, going to a couple of days off. So we probably end up, um, I'd expect it to be a bit quieter later on the week, the next couple of days anyway. Um, so tonight, yeah, they'll probably have a shortened session, I think. Um, but yeah, we'll, um, we'll take a look at the markets. But first, uh, again, we just got our, our disclaimer on the, on the screen there you can read through. Uh, just a general advice disclaimer there. Uh, we're not giving any any specific advice, obviously. So feel free to read through that at the start. Uh, and also our new website, which I'm sure a lot of you have been through. Um, now, the topic for today, we're going to look at um, some stocks that we view as having some explosive potential, potential to really kick up hard um, and go high off, of, off what we deem you know, technically a really nice base that's been building. Some of them are not quite as nice as others. It's hard to find the ones that really look great. Um, but we've got quite a few there we can just go through. And anyone that's, um, if you've got something that you want to uh, put through later on, just feel free to put it into chat or you can send it through as an email if you want to just send through a, a copy of a chart or a picture of a chart that you're looking at. Uh, we can do that later on. But initially, we'll just go, uh, we'll go through the, um, the chat for the day. And just prior to that, we're just going to go through the market and uh, where it's at at the moment. So let's kick it off. Um, hope we're all doing well. A good couple of days. Let's just get rid of this disclaimer and we'll get rid of the website there. So the ASX at the moment, yeah, it's, it's um, for, up 45 on the on the XJL, the ASX 200 anyway. So it's kicking off strong. It's continuing with that strength um, from the last few days. We spoke about that little breakout to be wary of. Uh, let me just get that up for you there. We were speaking about that the other day um, and it's played out pretty much to a T. So that sort of price price action there is looking quite good. Even if it's kicking off and overbought, I mean, that, that can oscillate overbought and that market can just keep powering away. It can get up to 5,500 easy. So I think it's going to retest that 5,500 zone. It's only, it's only 50 points, 40 points off at the moment. So I could really push up into that zone um, Yeah, after after testing that 50-50. Now, this is only a very minor shallow pullback, but a lot of the times you just could be wary of these wary of those types of things, um, those price patterns anyway. Uh, minor pullback after... A bounce off a solid level and that is the key level holding up uh, this current trend here so we've got a trend up from 50 50 we pushed up to 5600 just above and then we retraced uh, to 52 pushed back up again had another go uh, 55 built a, a major lower high but really in context of this overall trend up that's not broken until we get through uh, 50 50 which we didn't we just retested so trend still up we had that bounce you know that rejection of that level push up, you expect some sort of retracement, uh, maybe a bit of consolidation, a bit of contraction uh, down lower. It didn't happen. So like we said the other day, that could lead to some really good strength there, which and catch a lot of people off guard because a lot of people are not quite looking for the strength in the market that we're seeing. So yeah, it's kicking on. Let's just go over, we'll come back to some stocks in a second. We'll just click over some uh, a couple of charts. Um, so here we go. We've got the, um, well, let's get rid of that one there. We'll go to that later. This is the ASX. You can see we had a, a key level just this morning at 54.25, which 26, sorry, just the overnight highs. And we had another level at 54.06. And as we, we've spoken about and something to really keep an eye on is on the open, you got that wash out of that 54.06. So a lot of the time, especially when you've got the trend up, they wash out the downside, just put a few traders on the sidelines, get them ready to jump back in and chase themselves, <laughs> chase their tails. Uh, as we push back up through 54.26, so and the market's really gone on with it today. So uh, it looks good. All I think all guns blazing at the moment on the ASX, uh, and it it really could it could go a lot higher than you expect. So I think the key thing is expect the unexpected in the markets, uh, and that's generally you'll probably be on the right side of things. So 
yeah, we, we kind of like that. There's no, let's just have a, we've got the daily. There's no, you know, we're looking up the um, 5,500 on the daily charts, another 40 points above where we are at the moment. So all looking good. Let's take a look at the Aussie. We'll just go through these. It's continuing. It's still trending lower. It has bounced off that uh, 73, 73.10 mark. It's just making some high lows, but that's really just contraction for that major leg down. We've had a, you know, another sort of key level up at 74, say 75 even. Uh, we've had that in context of that whole leg down, just the, the most recent move down. Uh, it's still holding. We're just contracting back up. It may just be retesting 74.45 or maybe a touch high, but you can see that overall trend still lower. Um, got to do a bit, of, a fair bit of work on the longer time frame charts anyway before we start seeing the you know, base building. But at the moment, the Aussie's heading south uh, with a stronger US dollar. So the US dollar has has found a bit of weakness overnight. And just remember, just keep it in the back of your mind, coming into interest rate rises, it's pretty much a, um, it's it's widely expected at the moment, interest rate rise in the US uh, by the FOMC. Um, expected they're going to raise rates in December. Now, it doesn't mean that it's, it's it's just going to continue on because we said it before. I think last year was the last rate rise and another one this year. So it's one a year. If they're going to continue down that track, uh, unless things get out of hand with inflation, um, and that could do with the way uh, Trump's been talking and a, and a Trump presidency. Um, but just remember, if you don't get that, a lot of this is factored in and we could get a bit of, you know, buy the room, sell the fact coming to the rate rise. Uh, everyone knows it's going to happen. They've all positioned themselves that way. And then maybe some profit taken. We just get that bit of a sell off and a bit of a bounce in the US dollar. Uh, sorry, a bit of a drop in the US dollar as um, we get into that. So that could obviously it's going to have a flow on effect to Aussie dollar and obviously um, gold and all our little favorites. But yeah, we'll just keep an eye on that later on. Gold. Gold pushed up off 12, 12.05. Uh, still holding up off that level, uh, but it's still held down. Uh, key level at 12.32 or 12.30 zone. Uh, we made that lower high just in here and then rolled over into that 12.05. It could just be contracting off that. Uh, it wasn't a strong move through. You can see that strong push up, strong reaction down, built that lower high, and then we sort of pushed down quite strong, uh, consolidated around here, and that was way back in, uh, what is it, 1260, and then really just fell, out, fell off a cliff just down there towards that 1200, 1210 zone. Contracted a bit and took us quite a bit of time, and then we pushed down, not a strong push down though, and we have spent quite a bit of time contracting again and just consolidating through uh, It'd be interesting to see if we can hold uh, 1221, hold down. Uh, that would suggest that we're actually going to push down and retest or even wash out 1200, uh, get a major wash out potentially before moving higher or just continue our way down. But we'll see how they go. It's a major support zone down at 1200 anyway. Any questions on gold there? Anyone got some gold positions they're looking at? I mean, we're still interested in it. Nothing's really changed there. We've got some stocks that are starting to look good too. Uh, on gold, uh, refer to the last video if you just want to have a look at that. You know, we might go on it. Uh, Bit later on as well have a, have another look uh but yeah looks good we've got the us s p here this is a four hourly chart just to give you a bit more data you can see that market's just been grinding higher and it's just been bouncing in and out of overbought stretching into that zone pushing up pulling back but making higher lows on, on quite a quite a good pullback too you can see that uh, back to the 50 percent mark on the stochastics it just gives you an idea when you see these deeper corrections on the stochastic like a, a good solid move down but they're building higher lows. It's, it's quite a positive sign. And you can see we pushed up after that big drop, big sell off and, and even stronger reaction back up after you was elected, taking everyone off guard. I think mean, that's why we had such a good move up. We've just been building higher lows as we're working our way up into new highs on the um, on the S&P and the Dow. I think the Dow cracked 1900 for the first time uh, last night. I think it finished about there. I think the S&P finished at all time highs again. So it's just been a strong, strong, strong market. Um, and again, don't don't try to go second guess it and jump in on the short side, but just follow the trend. Trend up is is up at the moment anyway. So we have to see once that rolls over. There's probably not really a key level here at 21.94, but I'd expect if we start rolling over through 21.80, you know, sort of take out this trend, roll over, you build a major lower high, and then we might see a bit of a washout to the downside, but uh, still a long way off that. Nothing's changed. All right, any other questions? Just done? anyone's got something to say on the overall markets? Um, very strong. Again, we might be a bit of a muted, might be a bit of a bit of a reaction going to the US holiday season. They're short and weak, and then um, it'll be interesting to see what we do in the next few days. Just take a look, a quick look at some um, stocks we're watching, and we've got, and how they're going. Galaxy kicked off. Uh, we sent an alert that yesterday. That's kicked off quite nicely. Looks really nice. Looks like it could um, 
catch a few people. It's consolidated a bit through here above 30, uh, tested that a couple of times, and we just built that high low around the 34 mark and just pushed up through 38. We're just testing this sort of intra, oh, sorry, short term high just at uh, 38 at the moment. We have traded through that to 38 and a half. So we're expecting once, if that gets taken out, or once it gets taken out, it's all looking good for it at the moment, we get that accelerated move higher. And then um, as, as late buyers come into the party, Yeah, EVN, that's true. Hasn't done too well lately. Let's just take a quick look. Oh, look, we'll, we'll recap gold a bit later on. We'll just have a bit, a bit of a squeeze once we get stuck into this um, the chat today. Uh, what else we got? We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got CYP, which is still above our entry at 74, I think. They're about 74, yeah, 74. Uh, still above that. Did kick on a bit. We're still expecting that, you know, that could ex easily accelerate higher. The weekly's still looking good. Got to be legs to it. Could just run on up into you know, that ninety to the dollar zone. Uh, it's a good psychological mark, a dollar two round figure um, push up there. That could be good. I can't remember what else we have. Premium we're starting, we're liking. That's starting to look good. Potentially kicking off through there, but we'll keep an eye on that one. BPT looking great. I mentioned it around seventy six was the alert level uh, after this big push down. And then that's holding, looking great. Uh, that's kicking off. That's up at 84, 85, 85, I think, 84 and a half is last. And there's one more we're still hanging on to. Short position. That's starting to struggle, I think. We'll probably end up getting out of that one at break even. Um, that's the short position we've had. Done well. Expected to push through there, but it's starting to look like it's going to pop up to the top side. Maybe wash out a few late shorts like ourselves and then roll over. We don't know. But um, overall structure still doesn't look too bad at all. Looks very negative. So it'd be shame, shame to see that one go. It's been so long. You get attached to things sometimes. All right, let's um, let's get into it now. Um, so we've got um, what we're looking at today is we want to just cover some stocks um, with explosive potential. All right, so that's our little topic for the day. I'll get up a chart. Um, and what I'll do, I'll draw, I'll draw up what we what we want to be looking at. Uh, if I can do that, just get rid of a few things. All right, oh, that's not what I want to do. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? My little chart. Sorry, guys, just be a tick. Here we go. Now. So what we what we ideally want to be looking for, and this is how this is why this is how well how we categorise this as um, potentially having potentially having good potential. That's one of my favourite words, by the way. If you don't know, I use it a lot. Now, why doesn't that want to work for me today? All right, now we think we've got it a bit more sussed out. All right, so we want, ideally what we're looking for is something that's either come down in the base, but it's, it's got some sort of basing pattern. Uh, as, as I've mentioned before, we, what we look at is different phases of the markets. Um, maybe something we could be getting that's had a good move, you know, up, and we're starting to see that move down. Oh, sorry, starting to see. We've seen the move down. So not potentially move down. But this is just one one pattern. Um, and then we started to take out our anchor levels. But then we started to see consolidation. So what we're ideally looking for is something that's forming that pattern. Whether it was just based in between two levels, it's come down from a – it's either – you know, made its highs previously, or it's just uh, working its way up into a zone where it's then working its way and it's just consolidating. So, but what we're, what we're ideally looking for is this type of pattern. And we want to see that break out of that pattern. Um, but we want to see quite a bit. We want to just see some time spent building that, um, building that pattern, that different phase where the, 
whether either these these sellers that have, have been pushing it down are starting to get weaker, buyers are starting to step in. We've seen signs of that, evidence of that buyer stepping in, that the, the selling getting weak. Um, or this market, if it's if it's on the rise, it's had a bit of a pullback, a bit of a correction. We're starting to see buyers who maybe have missed the boat previously. And, you know, the story behind the stock is, is good. Um, I, I, just a few key factors that build this picture that we're seeing. Um, but we... Ideally, you want to see evidence of um, buyers stepping in, maybe a washout, a washout or two of recent lows or and recent highs. Just wash the market out a bit, clear clear some of these traders out, put them back on the sidelines. Um, just getting ready to get them back in. I mean, because if the story is still good, the stock looks good. Um, with it selling from highs down to lows, it could just be, it could be for any number of reasons. Um, if it's a bad stock, obviously, you, you probably won't be jumping into it too quick, but there's always a bit of bargain hunting, but especially if you get that type of price section. Um, there's one we've been looking at recently, and we'll look at it again in a second. It's new to the ASX, newly listed. It's obviously got a bit of a story to it. You, you, you don't get on there that easy without having some sort of story to it. Um, it's got, but it's got no, it's got no story on the ASX since it's listed. Uh, it's got no price action to, to refer to, but it could potentially have really a really good move to the top side as that's building. People want to jump in, grab a bit of a bargain uh, for whatever reason. Those sorts of things can have those sorts of stocks new to the ASX with a bit of bit of data. They may you get that initial pop up, maybe a bit of a sell off as there's a really quick profit taking. It builds a bit of a base, and that's what we're looking for, especially with the stocks that are listed. Um, but we want something that maybe has spent a lot of time doing not much. It's had a bit of a run up, maybe pull back. And so we're looking for a second leg up or we're looking for the story is still quite good. It's had a bit of a profit taken. It's pushed down and then starting to consolidate and build that pattern. But then we want to see from there um, evidence of the lows building. We may get a pop up to the top side. Um, from here, it's not, nothing's too concrete. Nothing set in stone just yet. It's just taken out a few of the, the minor highs. All right. And then we might work our way back into the zone. But what we're doing ultimately is holding higher lows, right? And this is where all this action that's um, playing out, all this high lows that are building is just building the picture for people. You might have one through here. You might have a secondary through here. And then we're starting to build another high low through here. So as people are watching it and you're building that picture, especially after a pop to the top side, you know, just to pop out it and taking out some of those, those recent uh, lower highs, and we've previously broken the anchor, so we've discussed this before uh, and what we're looking at. We've discussed it before in um, uh, one of the presentations, one of the streams, just the anchor level. As soon as they get broken, you're expecting a different phase. We're entering a different phase. It may just be consolidating and then can continue down or if it's gone up, consolidate and then roll over or go up. You don't know what's going to happen. But So from there, you want, you're want you coming out of one phase into the next phase, maybe consolidation, but you want to see evidence. Uh, we're looking for a move up. We're looking for that good, strong move up, good story behind the stock. So we want to see evidence of higher lows building and we're this is ideally what we want to see and then once you get that we've got the acre broken we get some highs built retest of the lows then you get those highs broken again that starts to bring in buyers i think all right and we see that by the lower highs building but then what we'd love to see and this is where i think we'll catch people off when they you get that little pop to the top so it then works its way back in so it's a bit of a false breakout it's it's just but it's showing signs of cracking and that's what you want to see then you want to see Potentially a shallow. That's always nice to see a shallow um, pullback when people are expecting to maybe build deeper into, you know, back into this range and even retest this support zone, the higher low. When you see these these shallow pullbacks, that generally leads to some really good moves. All right, and this is where we want to. You know, we talked about it before finding the sweet spot. That's what we call the sweet spot. Something that's, you know, you popped out, you pull back, you consolidate, and it's starting just dragging some buyers. And you get these people. This when you get that sort of consolidation through here. And it's holding that breakout zone maybe or it's just holding highs it's consolidating people it's not getting that pullback that people expect that starts leading to a, a really good um <laughs> no worries let's just i like my let's just get something a bit oh does that help oh, actually you know what i do Let's do that. All right. Let's draw it from here again. Just so if if it make it easy to see. All 
Now, we'll go back to that. So we're starting to pop out. Is that better there, Paul? Just let me know. Pull back, build back, pop up. So we've taken out that high and then go. So they start to lead. All right, beautiful. So what ideally we're looking for is these these moves are all very similar. You know, through the contraction zone, you get a move up. It's, it's sort of equal to, the, you know, this another little leg up, another move down. They're all relative. The volatility in those legs are quite even. Um, but then you start seeing a bit of a pop-up. You get that pop-up, maybe you know, a couple of days of good-sized candles, extended candles, um, and then a pull back in the range. So it's washing out those highs. And then you get that another faster move up, a bigger day. You know, you get those those the volatility increases during the day, and it might just take out the high. If it just takes out this high and then pulls back and you get that consolidation, what we look for, that's going to lead to, well, generally we would expect, and that's the price action we're looking for, we expect that to lead to a really good, strong move up. And that's what we're talking about, explosive potential there. Uh, getting the sweet spot, all the late buyers that may be waiting for it to retest the lows, whatever they're waiting for, they're not following, they're not maybe not taking note of those higher lows that are building as step, you know, people stepping into that stock a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier at higher prices, at higher prices, and then up she goes. All right, so I hope that, that makes sense. That's what we're ideally looking for. Um, yeah, the sweet spot we would call it is through here. If you're entering on a breakout here, and this is where I think people tend to get a bit caught, um, this, you know, once you start getting this price section, that's just a continuation trade. Okay, we're getting that up. And that's, we've spoken about this before also, the known and the unknown. This area, and this is definitely the unknown because this could easily roll over. It could wash, you know, it just could be a major washout, starts building a major lower higher, and then down we go. We take out the lows and we work our way lower. To me, that just buying on that breakout there, you have to have your stop. You could have it with inside the range, but it's not a very strong, not a strong level. You'd want to have it below the range. Uh, for me, that's just too much risk on trades. I don't like setting my trades up like that. Um, but when you start getting a push back in the zone and holding another higher low and then a breakout just taking out, especially when you see these types of things, just taking out those highs, even if it's a little bit, that is more the unknown. You still don't know what's going to happen, but you start to see, you know, like we said before, we're risk managers. We're not trying to second guess what's going on. We're just risk managers. So once you get a break up to those through maybe this high with them, you can easily define your risk and it's quite tight risk too. And then you start getting the candles get bigger, the volatility increases, you get those little pushes up. Uh, that's what you want to see. And then you by, by this time, it's more of a known. I mean, it's definitely known. We've got a good move up, good strong leg up. We've got a good basin pattern. You're coming out of that phase into a new extension phase. It, it all looks good. It all adds up together to build that little pretty picture we want to see. All right, so if we can go back, does that all make sense to everyone, what we're looking for and why? Um, or if there's any questions on why we structure it that way, but it's all, like we said before, it's the psychology of the moves. Um, not not overly concerned on what's happening. It's more the psychology of what we like to see. Now, I'll just get our first. Uh, now, the first one I want to go through is we've spoken about before, and this one's going so far so good. NTI, NTI, NTI. It's nice, I don't know why it's not on there. I'm sure that's what the stop code is. Uh, anyway, let's just get it down here. I was going to put it on a different chart, but um, it doesn't like me today. So without going through too much, yeah. <laughs> That's, I think that's the beautiful thing is just going through over and over and over again of um, examples, just some ideas. Um, or what? That, that does sink in a lot better, I think, anyway. So this one, this one's obviously, it was nearly, it hasn't been going for too long. What's that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, two weeks. Well, nearly, nearly three weeks, sorry, um, of data there, I think, tomorrow. So when it was listed, it had that pop-up. So that's... Whoever is owning the stock, I think it was listed at 20 cents. I think you said a while ago, someone told me a while ago, it was listed at 20 and it's traded up to, you know, 30. You've done all right. All of a sudden, you know, you made 50% uh, on your money and whatever you invested in it pop up. So you're going to get that original, that 
initial uh, sell-off. Right, we've got that. We, we just wash out that initial day uh, low, and then we pop back up again. Then we start seeing these these higher lows form. Okay, not here. Pop up through the highs, pull back. It's it's not taking at the lows. So this is where we started looking at. It looked great. I think through 34 and a half, and then you can see that it's just really kicked on. It's at 40 at the moment. It has traded to 42. So even if you got in at 42 and a half, um, that that's quite quite a good little return so far. But the potential of these ones um, to accelerate and just they start dragging people in. So someone that may have not got in on the float and just missed this buy here because they thought they could get it at a cheaper price. And then you start holding some higher lows, maybe retesting down on this candle here. I know it's not a lot of data, but the people that are wanting to get in that may know something uh, and like the story and want it as a cheap stock too, it's only 40 cents. Um, sooner or later, have to going to rush in. Uh, so this has got the potential of really starting to take out and really get those bigger. So all these candles are, you know, green candle, green candle, green candle. They're all very similar. They're not, they're not that um, sharp increase in volatility, but I think the potential for this to come because it's it's so there's nothing, there's not enough. There's not a lot of data there. There's not a lot to know about it. Um, in in essence, it's blue skies everywhere, um, clear skies. So everyone's a winner. If that starts taking out the highs and we start getting a bit more acceleration, in you know some bigger days, that I think will really kick off. And there's some big potential in that just to ex um, accelerate a lot higher. So. That's not a clear example, but it's something when you get these new stocks that float, uh, could really kick in and, and push on. Well, let's try and get another one up here. S, I think it's SEA. Now, I'll get some weekly. Just quickly, we're going over that this is the monthly chart. Now we can see the price action here. Okay, it's it's pushed up, pulled back. It's pushed up, retested the 70 zone. I think you can all see that. All right, it's probably not. Yeah. All right, so it's retesting. And we've got down to uh, this level here. We've pushed down to that 10, just under 10, say five, five cents. And we've worked our way off there. Had a good acceleration move, a strong move higher up to about $1. ten. So that was that was massive. It was great. And then we pulled back, you know, inside inside lower high, retested the zone at 40 cents and then started going on. We pushed up to $1.40. Had a massive sell-off. Um, and basically, we've come all the way back down to retest five cents. We're currently trading around 18 cents. So that's on a monthly chart. The trend down with the MA is what we use. The MA is lower, but you can see that volume stepping in. Uh, volume is really kicked up, and it's it has it did kick up on the sellers. So you can see that's really washed out some sellers, and some buyers are stepping in on these these big green candles in that month there. You know, quite a, a good um, size, quite a lot of volume there. You can see that's building. Um, down at the lows at five cents. We've been down here before. We see what it led to. We know we've got levels on the top side. Probably on a monthly chart, your key level is right up at 70. So there's a, a lot of fat in that trade if it was going to move. Um, let's just break it down. So you can see on the weekly chart, we're starting to hold the higher lows too, which looks really nice. Um, we've still got some lower highs to contend with, but on the weekly basis, it's starting to work its way higher. All right. So this is. At the top of price action, it could really lead to some good moves, especially if we look back on the weekly. The next sort of major resistance areas is, like I said, right up to 70. Even if it, um, that's one move down, big strong move down, contraction back up uh, to sort of 72. Another good strong, another leg down. So that's two strong legs of, and that's just pretty much retraced all of that move up from way back in 2010, all the way up to $1.42, three. All right. So, and we can see evidence of volume buyers are starting to step in. Uh, so if you just work it way down to the daily, I think if we can get that up on the other chart, uh, SEA, let's just get that. All right, there we go. Now this is this is the last sort of price section what we've got. So you can all. You can see that move down. I'm just going to check. Yep. So what we've got here, we've got um, this is our key level. It's at 140. Oh, that, that's the that's a, the all-time high, about 142 thereabouts. We've got a key level through here at 70. But you can see, really, there's not much apart from that. You've got a minor level here, right? And at, that's not really holding the trend down. So if, even if it's the price is just contracting, 
All right, so we've had that move down, broken out. We've built that high low um, through here. Even if it's just contracting, it's still got a lot of fat in it. It could easily go up to 50 cents from 18 cents. So that's, you know, 50, 60%. Um, and you start taking out these little levels here that we can see. The potential for that to really, you know, holding higher lows here, holding a higher low. Sooner or later, when we start getting up to this zone where people have sold it, it's had that reaction up, people expect more selling, and we start just getting, building the bases, and maybe a strong move up to here, even a washout, and it pulls back into that zone. This is the type of price action we'd be looking for, because I think that more of the unknown, maybe people expect it to roll over, maybe it's going to hold below 20 cents and start rolling over right down, but we're just remembering where we come from to on the monthly, down at some major support. So there's a fair few key factors that are, are the lining for these sorts of stocks and they could really kick up strong so that's what we look we would be looking for on that type of structure you can see high, higher lows are holding as we start getting higher you know back up into the sort of that key level there i think people are, who don't want to miss the boat may start to see we see those volatility increase expanding on the daily um on each bar the daily you know the moves higher getting stronger uh, all that sort of um, examples add them together could really see a, a good strong move up and potentially we'd love to get in there if it does break out wash it out those highs pulls back holds a higher low you can see you know a pullback here high low building ideally that would be a prime position uh even if you you know we get through here and just wash it like we said before start holding that around those highs and then go that's another key level after that you know those moves become more continuation trades all right does that make sense so that's some good price structure starting to build on that one. Let's start looking at, just go through a few others. Now I'll just see if we can come up. I'm just going to pick a prime one that we've looked at. All right, this one, API, Australian Pharmaceutical Industries. Industries. What I, what I like on this one more than anything else is you can see, obviously, it's opened up. It was around, I don't know, around $2 mark when it floated thereabouts. It was oscillating around there and then pushed up to that 375, pulled back, made a major lower high at 3 bucks, and it's rolled over and it's pushed all the way down to, say, $0.25. What it, what it did after that, uh, that's a $0.25 cent mark. Was it 20, 20 cents? Sorry, a lie. And it's had that initial kick up. Yeah, the initial kick up. So I think it traded down to about 20 cents. Had that push up. And then what it's done is contract. So initial push up through 80, pull back, hit 20. And it's just pushing up into that uh, resistance zone again. It's, it took that zone out. Just bear with me one second there, guys. Just one second. All right, so I'm back again. So we've had our worked our way back up. We took out that high. Now we get our drawing tool here. I'm just finding this a tad easier. All right, let's just get that on snap. So just the monthly looks good. We've we've built a base on this. Can everyone see that chart? Right, we're there. All right, great. So we've come down. We've and it's, that's around the 20 cent mark. We've got a high through here. You know, it's pushed up off that high, and this is what we're saying about that little move back down. We've washed out the highs, moved back down. It's people probably expecting a better consolidation, better contraction back in the zone before heading high. It hasn't done that. It's just held those highs, and then bang, you get that accelerated move higher. Perfect example of that's on a weekly chart of getting in the prime position and just looking for evidence of higher lows holding. It did high um, build some high lows. Held though, you can see there's a little intraday high low here. And it held that and it's just had the accelerated move higher all the way from 
risk really nice from about a dollar. Uh, you had say a 20 cent risk, 10, 15 cent risk on that one you could have had and all the way up to $1.90. So quite a good return there, risk, risk reward return. Um, what we're seeing at the moment and what I like to see is this current price action. If we just go to a, we're on the weekly. So what we're doing now is holding this type of price action here. We're holding high lows. We've retested a few different positions. Let's get that different level, sorry. All right. Let me let it back again. So you can see we've pushed up, pulled back, held some high lows, high low in here, had a good accelerated move up, up, made a lower high, we just washed out the top side. Okay, lower low, built a lower high, uh, pushed back through this, made a lower low, pushed up. You'd expect it to keep rolling over. What we've done, we're building a higher low here. Took, took out this inside high, retested, all great price action. And currently we're just back down and retesting this higher low here. So if this holds, you've got a couple of beautiful rejection candles and that uh, few days, last few days, it's really pushed up off that 170. Um, starting to see some good signs. We're starting to see if that breaks out of there and we do get some price action, what we'd like to see if I can draw that up. Uh, all right, that's the move down into that leg. We've had that bounce. What we'd like to see is maybe a pullback, another minor high low, and then we could get that accelerated move up. And even if we just push up into these highs, but this overall longer term price action, you can see is, is that type of price action we like to see, you know, some lower lows, lower highs, um, a lower, lower lows and a higher low start in the form. We just popped out through that, pulled back, retested 170. So I think that's got the makings of another good, strong leg up. We probably got a bit of work to do, obviously, but I think uh, we're starting to see those initial signs. It's looking good. And just remembering if we click down onto the monthlies in a good zone, you can see these stochastics cr crossed up and that's starting to form that W pattern we like to see. We call it a W pattern, so a good zone, uh, holding higher lows, get into the weekly, similar thing. It's in that zone where it's been oversold. That's you know, leg, a leg down is quite strong, but it's building that high low. It couldn't reach down to dollar fifty-five, so all looking good. And on the daily, we're on our way up, so it's looking good. That's one to keep an eye on, guys. Anyway, any questions on that one? Just trying to find something else that I like. Now, premium, if we go to the, the monthly, see this type of price action here? The monthly, if we just draw that up, we'll just get our monthly price action. You can see that that curving price action is, is really nice. So we've got that. This is obviously the monthly. We've taken out some highs recently, pulled back, retested it, bit of consolidation around here. And we pushed up off those highs. This is on the monthly, don't forget. So just remembering where we've come from, way up at $1.20, if we get a bit of contraction in here on the shorter time frames, like a weekly or daily, uh, I'd like to see that's pushed up off 30 cents. Maybe pull back. We might just build some lows, start build those high lows, and then bang. Especially the, the fact that that's a monthly chart, I think that leg up can be one. You know, This is potentially the start of another good leg up to, say, 75 or even get that even stronger accelerated move higher. If we get into a daily just to check that uh, time frame out, see that, uh, oh, sorry, that's the weekly. See that nice little basis falling, higher lows been building, get that little move up. We could just be continuing that move up on a weekly um, time frame anyway. But the daily is starting to show some good signs, potentially at 44, double bottom there, minor low, higher low holding. Uh, if we get through 48 and up towards yeah, that 49.50 zone, if we get up to that there and hold these high lows, I think we could really start attacking 54 and higher and get that initial, that, that really strong move up as we're getting buyers that probably missed the boat in here, maybe waiting for a retest of that zone, 35 to 40. We're not getting it. They don't want to miss out. In they jump and away we go. All right. Now, let's just finish up on those there, guys. There's, there's a few more, but... Um, Oh, let's just quickly flick through them. That's not the one we're looking at. Um, SPL, I think we're starting to see similar signs there. If you look at this monthly, it had a good move, double bottom down here. It just test, retested those lows, good push up. It's come back down, potentially a long, long, long-term high low building at 40. 
holding some high lows in here, that could lead to a good strong leg up, a good healthy leg back up to retest the highs. Looking good. Um, new firm, not as stronger technically, but it's looking good too. See that longer term, uh, push up, come back down, building a lot of cons a couple of years worth, four or five years worth of consolidation through here. Just had that, that initial push up, pull back, holding six bucks and starting to go again. So that could really lead us to a more accelerated move up as, um, you know, volatility increases that angle and it just kicks up from there. Stop code. We've got it up. Oh, okay, you may or may not be able to see it. Sorry, Paul. Uh, it, it is up there. This one's new farm. It's only on mainly um, the Spark program we're using. You can see it in the top sort of left corner of your screen. It should be up there. Oh, sorry, SEA, go back. Uh, so, Emery, I'm guessing if you say if you pull back around 20, Sundance, yes, so if it kicks up, if you're saying kicks up and pulls back around 20, that would be good, yeah, because it's holding those higher lows. If it pushes up through there, what I'd like to see this curving action starting to take out the highs, uh, they're called inside highs, and this is an inside high at 20. Um, in essence, if it gets through that and it does pull back and retest it, it could be a, a good little entry. Yeah, too small to read. Sorry about that, Paul. I'll see if um, I don't think it's on the other chart anyway. These other chart, these other ones are Ninja Trader, by the way. Uh, yeah, and the stock codes, it's right on the left hand side. It's just off the screen, which is unfortunate. Unless, of course, I do this. This might help out a bit. This one's SEA, by the way. Yeah, that price action looks good. Yeah, we break. That's what you're just saying there, uh, Anne Marie. Break up through there, pull back, and then go. Let's just see what else we got. I've got a few more. I, just, I don't know how good they are compared to what we've looked at, and that's not what I was after. Uh, Nanosonics is probably. It's a bit late in it, but I think that, you know, we've had one leg up, a contraction back, a good strong leg up. We could just be contracting back, but it's just the daily that's starting to look good, show some good signs. The weekly is pulling back. It's had a more consolidation up there than anything than the sell-off. Uh, stochastics are moving down, so the strength of the moves down is pretty good, but it's been held up okay. The daily is starting to look good. You know, high lows here through, say, 3, 305. Maybe build another high through it, a lower, higher low high low at 310 and then we start taking off and, and push up through those 340s. It could just get that last dish blow out to the top. Um, yes, Nan, CNU. This is CNU, Chorus Limited. That, you can see there's not a lot of data in that. It's been going 2012, I guess there is a bit of data. Uh, you can see that push up, sell off, taking out the, the lower highs, building a higher low. And up we go. Uh, we could just be at that stage now. We're just on the weekly charts into that potential. That could be a high low on a weekly chart. We're starting to get those early signs. Um, check it out. Early signs. What we want to see is a bit of a pullback, more contraction, and then we could get that uh, lead to explosive move higher. Yeah, yeah. So what we're everything we're showing here, Paul, um, is early stages. So we're just trying to show you what we're looking for, and Things to be, you know, keep an eye out. Obviously, if they go well, uh, we'll be seeing out alerts. If they set up for us, actually, PPS Premium, we've just said net an alert on uh, for a break higher, so we like that one. Uh, what was the API I'm, I'm watching? So all these ones that are coming into that zone are starting to show those signs with the potential to kick up. These are the ones we'll be alerted to for sure. All right. Um, we're going to have to probably finish it up there. Is there any chart quickly just before we call it quits? That you want to have a quick look at? Yeah, CBA. We don't mind that. Um, but for us, technically, I mean, I'm not seeing a setup just through here. It's just coming off a bottom there. This could easily hold these highs and roll over. 
Um, that we've talked about the banks before. That longer term, that's a weekly chart on that one. That's holding that 70 bucks zone quite well. Also, it still has built some um, lower highs just in there as well. So it's still holding. Um, that hasn't broken the trend yet. That can just consolidate through here. Hold below, say, 78, thereabouts, 79, or even 80. Let's just call it a round figure. Could easily hold below there and just, you know, contract in there and then pop out. We want to see that initial push up, thrust up, pull back. And then once we're into that pull back, it's still the unknown. Um, and then once it starts heading higher again, we want to jump on board. So have got our eye on these, especially the banks and Westpac's one we've spoken about quite a bit. Um, these trading in here, we did get on to something in here, push up, but we got, I think we got a break even trade, maybe just stopped out for a small loss on that one as it pulled back and we had a big wash out to the downside. But still, these banks are starting to show some good signs. That's starting, you can see the higher lows. That's clearer on WBC on Westpac than the others. NAB. For me, NAB's not confirmed just yet. You've got the double bottom here at 24. Still the key levels up towards here. This is a weekly chart, don't forget. Uh, we still haven't got our setup we've just seen. And ANZ. Yeah, ANZ. It's, it's had a bit of a good run up there. So it is, I mean, if you just jump in here, this, the risk is this could easily roll over, test some lows, build that major higher low, and then go. So, yeah, still a lot of potential in there. ATC, Michael. Let's just have a quick look. Hectic chemicals. Uh, the monthly. Just get rid of that. So it's just pulling. It's still making some. It's that original push up through twenty is showing some good signs. Um, you can see it's just taking out these levels through here around 17, 17 and a half, 18. Taking out those recent highs there, popped up through 20. So that has got potential to hold some higher lows. Uh, it has built one here at 8 and potentially holding this one at 10 if it gets through, say, 12 and a half. Um, at the moment, we don't know where this leg, this leg down is going still. It's just getting into that good zone. So we're in a zone. It's beautiful, but it's just it's a tad too early just to be looking at this for me anyway. What I like to see as a buy. Um, let's just draw this up quickly just to finish it off. Alrighty. So we've got a major high low through here. Potential, this is not a confirmed high low until we start popping up through 12 and a half. So nothing's confirmed just yet, and we are getting a bit extended on the um on the stochastics up to towards this level. So if that's our two levels there. We don't want to jump in too early. We've seen it move down. It's been bouncing around through through here. Uh, we don't know where it's going from just, just at the moment, but um, the scenario is there that we pull back, make that high low, and then pop up, then it could be off. Otherwise, because we haven't broken through uh, that 12 and a half zone, it could easily just go down and do the opposite, just in reverse. All right, so there's it could just continue and then attack, even attack eight, break out below eight. Um, we don't know. It still could have some downside, but really, for me, looking at the weekly two, the probability is that I'll be leaning to the upside. Obviously, I like. I don't mind the look of that one. All right. Well, I think we'll call it. Uh, we'll just call it a day there, guys. Thanks very much for joining us again. Uh, it's been great fun. Um, I'll remember to use that different pen there, Paul. To make sure the colours are, they look all pretty on my my screen, but it probably is a bit hard to see through. So um, yeah, like I said, these this is just what we we're chatting about the explosive moves. What we're looking for, we're just trying to get in that sweet spot. We're trying to get in that zone where we're trying to take advantage of that move up, and we want to be able to. You know, if you can't quantify your risk, I just don't want to be in it. There's always something else to trade. You know, there's there's that many stocks to to look at. You just got to do the time and effort, I guess, to flick through them. Um, flick through, but if you if you can sort of understand what we're talking about today and what we're looking for and the structure, the price structure. I think it's easy just to flick through chart after chart and just something will pop out to you. It should stand out pretty clearly. Um, it's what we've discussed before. If it doesn't, if you have to work a trade into it, don't bother. If you can see it stand out pretty clearly because you've got a picture in your head of what you want to see, um, that's all you want to do. Just flick through the charts. You see something, you go, hang a sec. We're holding high lows. We're getting that pop up to the top side. It's not strong, but it's got that potential to really go. Just go back to the monthly, weekly charts just to confirm. Okay. 
day, okay, the monthly and weekly is still looking good. And uh, then go down to the daily to see where you could potentially enter and just mark up what you want to see and then just wait for it. That's as simple as that. Well, it's not simple, I guess, but that's basically the process. Um, if you can stick with that, I think you, you, you can do quite well. And then it's just really a numbers game, just trying to get through that setup and just try to put yourself continually in the right zone. If you're not doing that, uh, you're going to get chopped out more than anything else, I'd say. Um, but just always, if you can define your risk, and I, I mean define your risk on higher lows, uh, for instance, here. You know, if I want to see a breakout to the top, I can easily define my risk down here. Okay, I'm happy to handle that for potentially, you know, the, the, the leg up could be, I don't know if you can see uh, this low just here. That's the previous leg up. And if we're going to see a similar type of thing from here to here, which it, which it actually did, our risk is not much. It's easy three or four to one. We can assume, and that to me is a good little, okay, that's a good trade setup. It's something to go for. Well, CV could be. No, it's just not the way I trade. That's un and that's all. If you take it at the bottom of range and then you just sit, uh, you're just watching. And I like to see a setup where I can just justify my risk. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's true. Broken down between a range. Yeah, that's 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 one way to trade for sure, Paul. Trading between a range, um, that's great. But I mean, you can limit, you could have your losses if you're just assuming it's just going to continue bouncing between that range. And there'll be times where you're obviously going to get caught out. It's not going to bounce between the range. And if you um, if you just buy the lows, it could just make a lower high and go, um, go back down again. And then you're sitting, okay, it's going to come back, it's going to come back. So there's just those odd times you've got to be wary of. Or you've always got to have a stopping place, I think anyway. It's probably not so much, I come from a futures background, so I'd never trade like that. You can easily trade between ranges, but I still, I always want to quantify my risk off the bottom side. You know, if it's a support zone, going between support and resistance quite a few times, um, and I'm happy to buy at support, I still want to see those little minor high lows form just so I can quantify my risk. I'm always looking for that. Um, the only reason I sort of, you know, we're not, not that we're waiting thing, for things to break out. It's just that when they break out, we're getting a better run. Um, you could easily trade CBA like that. That's fine. If, it, if that works, it works. There's nothing nothing wrong with that. I'm just looking for those ones that are moving, that have got the potential to really go hard. Um, and by just looking for that, that's just the style I'm looking for at the moment, the, the sort of trade setups we're looking for. Um, there's more than enough to go around to have enough trades going. You know, we only we only look to, to use up to about 10 positions, I think, when we're doing the alerts. I think that's more than enough. Um, we're, any one time we're around six to eight. They're about we're at six positions at the moment. We've got down to three as the market sold off. A few positions got stopped out. We're back into a few more. So I think it just shows that there's always something. There's always something happening somewhere. There's always a stock moving. So it's always good fun anyway. All right. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us, guys. Uh, it's fantastic. We'll we'll be back on again tomorrow at the same time. Same bat time, same bat place. We'll give that a go and we'll um we'll have our topic popping out tomorrow morning and we'll talk about that and we'll see how we go. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Any questions, anything you wanted to put, just put through to um, uh, support at tradesetup.com.au, that'd be great. Anyway, thanks for joining us and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.